Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in for what is going to be a video all about lipsticks, Urban Decay lipsticks to be exact. You might know if you follow me or a lot of other beauty people here on YouTube, on Instagram. Urban Decay sent out a box full of new launches to celebrate the 20th anniversary along with their holiday stuff. And so this is kind of a combo of both. It's going to include swatches and review of the vintage collection, nine shades from their original, like very first lipstick line, but updated with the new Vice formula. And then they also have two palette, lipstick palettes that they released or launched as part of their holiday collection. One is exclusive to Sephora and one is exclusive that's a word that's not gonna happen today. Apparently exclusive to Ulta, one at Ulta and one at Sephora. Uh, and so I'm gonna be running through swatches of all of these. Guys, my lips hurt a lot because I swatched these all within like the same two hour period. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. There are nine shades in this collection. You get the same amount of product for the same price, 17 bucks a bullet, as the, um, the, the newly reformulated you can see up here in the top back here. These are all or, or Wendy's top 10 picks, I believe, in the new Vice collection from it. I have a whole video reviewing and swatching those as well. If you want to go check it out, I will link it here or in the uh, info box below. Same sort of packaging, except this you can see has kind of a brushed silver exterior. It's supposed to be a throwback to the original packaging, whereas the new Vice lipstick collection is, is more something closer to their newer look and feel. So before I get to swatch and I do want to say that if you are more of a classical everyday sort of lip sh lipstick shade lover, I recommend you skip ahead to the palettes because these have some pretty wild and crazy shades. I mean, this is one of the more subdued, like deeper neutral shades. There are some lilacs and blues and a sheer black. So these are definitely more fun shades. Like I said, they're throwbacks to the original, but just so you know, you can go ahead and skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp to where the palettes Start. So now let's run through the shades, shall we? There are only two finishes of the six within the new Vice lipstick collection. There are only two cream and sheer within the vintage line. Uh, and so with that, the first shade is Asphyxia. It's a soft lavender with a blue micro glitter. I will say that when most of these shades that have a micro glitter in it, I could definitely feel a slight texture on my lips. The grittiness definitely subsides as it kind of melts into the texture of the rest of the lip product. But as I'm applying Lying, there is a definite grittiness there, something to be aware of. Next there is Pallor, and this is a frosted lavender with a gray shift. And the funny thing about this guy is for how deep it looks in the tube and even swatched on your hand, it really shears out on the lips. And even though it is a, it says it's a cream formula or cream finish from this collection, this line, I find it's more of a metalized, even though, or, or something, no, I would say it's closer to a metalized or, finish because it has that shift and shimmer to it as opposed to a flat cream finish. Then there is Plague, another cream finish, and this is a bright purple with pink undertones. I would say it's pretty true to what I think of as a cream finish. It's pretty opaque, it's nice and buildable, and overall just a really fun, bold purple to wear on the lips. The one thing about all of these is that I don't notice them staining my lips. Whenever I removed, no matter how deep the color was as I removed it, none of them stained my lips at all. This blue, UVB, is probably one of my absolute favorite blue colors ever. I just, I don't know what about it I love so much, but it's one of my favorites. It too is a cream finish, and they describe it as a vibrant blue with a purple shift. It definitely has some light frostiness or iridescence to it, but it has amazing opacity and just stands out. I mean, it is a blue, so it's gonna stand out like crazy no matter what, but it really just has this like neon facet to it that I've never seen in a blue lipstick before. So, so pretty. Then there is a deep blue called Frostbite. This again is a cream finish, but it is a frosted deep blue with multicolored micro glitter. This, once again, it's one of those cream finishes, but to me, this fits in some other category within their collection because it's not quite as opaque like some of the other shades that I've talked about. And that I feel like that micro glitter kind of helps sheer it out. Again, this is another micro glitter that I can kind of feel that texture on my lips, but might not be a deal breaker for you. Just want to let you know what my experience has been. But yeah, I'm not really sure. I think you'll be able to see in the swatch here that it definitely looks bold on the lips, but it's cert I, I don't know that I would call it completely opaque. Onto the goldeny browns and the two that I'm wearing on my lips right now, first of which as a base is Roach. This is a cream finish and is described as a deep burgundy brown, but honestly, I would say it is a pretty like golden bronzy 
toasty brown. Less red undertone, but I, I mean, I guess there are hints of red because I do feel like it's a very wear wearable. It's not like cooler and ashy. It, it is more red leaning, I suppose, but it's a pretty true brown in my book. And then there is Smog, another cream finish that is a deep coppery bronze. Both of these are pretty highly shimmery or frosty, I guess I would say. And so something to be aware of. They're very eye-catching. I personally like them, but like I said, even though they say cream finish, they have a texture and a shift to them. So I'm not sure why they fall in the cream finish category. And the last two are sheer formulas. The first one is Bruise, which is this beautiful deep burgundy red. I really, I think this is going to be a good, despite looking super deep in the tube, I think this is going to be a very wearable burgundy for a lot because of how much it shears out. The one thing about these swatches to keep in mind as you're watching them is because I did, did them all at once, I, I think that kind of contributes to the uneven texture, like portions of my, you know, as your lips kind of dry out and stuff, even though I exfoliated and then replenished with a balm and like an intensive lip treatment, I could pull one of these shades to wear one, off. like as I've been testing these, I could pull them to wear one off for a little bit and they didn't apply like they are in the swatches that you're seeing here for some reason. So I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna see in the future if there's something I can do with the way, you know, maybe I don't swatch these on my lips all up front just to get a truer read on that texture for you guys, but just something to know as you're watching these is I feel like the texture with some of these bunched up and they wore unevenly, but that's just not what I personally experienced when wearing them on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think this bruise color is going to be amazing for the fall. Same goes for Oil Slick. This is another sheer that when you look at it, you're like, that is a black lipstick, but it's really not. You apply it to your lips, your natural lip pigment kind of peeks through there. You'll see that mine kind of, the natural pink tones in my lips are taken down a little bit. It's definitely not a super dramatic black. I think you could, you could wear it alone or you could mix it in with some shades to deepen up your everyday lipstick colors for fall. It's a great mix in shade as well. So that's the entire vintage collection. I would say the quality is very consistent from from this to the Vice, overall the Vice collection that they relaunched, like reformulated and relaunched. Very similar, same quality, same wear time for the most part. I mean, the shears are a little bit shorter lifetime on the lips. I find like two, two and a half. For something more pigmented like bruise, I can definitely get a longer wear time out of, but the creams definitely are longer wearing. And I think you'll find with some of the shimmery and iridescent textures, the color will wear away. And rather than the pigment staining your lips, it's actually that texture and that micro glitter or iridescence that stays behind the longest. It kind of gets caught in my fine lines and stuff and not a huge deal to me. Like I said, just reporting back to you what I personally experienced. So those are the vintage lipsticks. Let's now move on to the palettes. They retail for $35, which as far as holiday sets and sets in general, especially for Armored Decay Go, at face value seem like a good price. You get 12 shades in each of these, but when, ugh, that's the, dang it. Um, that's the brush. Love the brush that comes with it. So you get the brush and then you also get 12 shades here. Each of these shades though is 0.02 ounces. So in total, like total product by, weight equals about two lipsticks. So when you do the math, two lipsticks comes out to about 35 bucks. So as far as product goes, I guess I would think about it as are there two lipstick shades that you know you will love and use super frequently? If so, I would spend the money on that. But if you're someone who really likes variety, you like to change things up, you want something like a glittery pink shade, like Big Bang, but you don't want the whole tube, these are an awesome kind of collection of shades for you to do that with. Or if you're wanting to try out some shades, you're not sure which shade you want from the line, this is a great way to get a wide variety and mix things up on a day-to-day -day or even within the day. The other thing that I think is really important to note is that this is the original formula. We're finding more and more that these holidays holiday sets or even, you know, sets that aren't part of the permanent collection can often be formulated differently, contain different ingredients, and these are the Vice lipstick formulas. So 
something else to take note of is that if you try a lipstick in here, you love it, you love the pigment, you love how it performs, you're gonna have the same sort of lipstick and performance and all that kind of stuff if you buy the full two. So let's go ahead and walk through Blackmail first. I do wanna hold both of these up together so you can kind of see, like get a visual comparison before I do that. They are slightly different and there are also three shades that overlap between the two. Um, at first I was going to say that the one sold at Sephora, which is this guy, is a little bit more more kind of like bold and daring, but realistically, I think it just comes down to a preference. There are more nudie neutrals, but you also have like the reds and pinks in the one sold at Ulta, but this one also has those same neutrals and reds and pinks, but you just have the added, you know, steely gray, the greens, and some of the more bold purple shades. So really it's a matter of just finding your preference and taking your pick. So now let's move on to the Blackmail palette. Here is, it's very similar to the lipstick packaging. You have kind of the gunmetal gray on top with the gold on the bottom. The one thing that is not my favorite about it is look at how dirty it gets. Like who has time to clean that? But uh, it's very sleek. Very sleek, has a good like heft to it without being super, heavy and cumbersome, like you're not gonna wanna throw it in your purse, but it is has a nice sleek profile considering all it contains. You have a nice size mirror in here as well as a guard if you want. I don't think you can fit anything in here, but basically it'll keep, if you get kind of messy with your lipstick in here, you have the guard so it's not gonna get on your mirror. Also love that, it says lipstick is my vice here on the packaging. So then you lift that up and inside you finally get to your lipstick shades and there you'll also find a lip pencil, a retractable lip pencil. This little guy is a really nice lip pencil. I mean, there you can see you push up to, to pull it up and it's like, it feels like the quality of their normal brushes or like a brush you'd find in a naked palette, which I still have kicking around here and use on a daily basis. So I do think this is a great addition to the palette. That is, I guess, another added value, even when you do the math and you realize you get about two lipsticks worth of products and you're paying for the price of about two lipsticks, you still do get the added value of a lip brush, which you definitely need because these are potted lipsticks. So now let's move on to shades. Starting here at the bottom, Vanished. This is a sheer formula. It's a pale neutral nude. And one thing you'll notice that I find is a little easier to do with this potted format and a lip brush is with these sheer formulas, I wanna go in and layer up, layer up, but you will find that you get kind of a streaky, you're they're more prone to streakiness when you do that. So just something to be aware of is just to consider the the texture of the lipstick before you go in and applying expecting, you know, complete coverage because that will only disappoint you. 1993 is a comfort matte formula and it is a medium brown. This might be my favorite shade of the entire palette. It's a beautiful, I mean, like the shade suggests, that, that brown lipstick color that was so popular in the 90s. This is the ultimate version of that shade. Absolutely love it. Then there is Ex-Girlfriend, which is sheer shimmer finish. It's a nude rose with a pink shimmer. Amulet is a metalized finish. It's a metallic brick rose. Conspiracy I swatched before when I did the 10 of the new Vice formula. I included that there, but it is a metalized finish with a plum bronzy shimmer. This is a really fun shade because you can't really tell when it's actually in the pot, but on the lips that plum uh, facet of the shade really shines through. It's surprisingly plummy and surprisingly wearable. I, I really like that shade. Then there is Blackmail, which is a comfort matte finish and a deep berry wine shade. This is one where I found I like to blend it all out with my fingers. One of the downsides of applying with a lip brush and some of these formulas is that you get that streakiness like I said before. With the sheer shades I find it's because I'm layering too much up expecting complete opacity but it's a sheer formula. Whereas something like this where it was a comfort matte I just was pressing too hard. I couldn't get the pressure right and so I found that when push comes to shove I just needed my finger to kind of pat everything out and even things out. Moving to the top row, we have Sheer Shame, which is a sheer berry shade. Firebird, which is this amazing opaque deep fuchsia. This one will stain the lips. Of all of the lipstick shades that I swatched amongst the vintage collection and these two palettes, Firebird will stain your lips, along with the next shade, which is Big Bang. And that is a metalized finish with bright pink sparkle. This is another one where not only will the pigment stain your lips, but those sparkles will also linger once the color is all gone, or like once that finish, that lipstick finish is all gone, those sparkles will still be hanging around. Disobedient is a classic medium pink shade. I think this is going to be one of those universal, universally flattering shades on a lot of people. Easy, 
is a cream finish. It's a bright red orange, super pigmented, really even wearing, and then 714, which is a mega matte and one of my favorite mega mattes. It's another one of those that I swatched in the original 10 from the Vice collection that I have. And without fail, anytime I wear it, I always get asked, what red is that? It's this beautiful blue-based red, so it makes your teeth look nice and white. It's very opaque. As far as matte lipsticks go, it is extremely comfortable. You don't have to worry about it drying your lips out. And the good news is that 714 and Firebird and Big Bang, some of my favorite shades, period, of the Vice lipstick line, are also the shades that are duplicated to the other lipstick palette. So once again, starting from the bottom, there is Wrath, which is this really pretty glittery red finish. Like, I think a lot of people are gonna love this for the holidays. Big Bang, like I said, it's duplicate from the other one. Firebird, another duplicate from the other one. Vanity Kills, which is this really pretty matte lilac color. Very unique, not a shade I see a whole lot anywhere, really. Then there is Speedball, which goes the total opposite end of the purple spectrum from Vanity Kills. It's very deep and rich and plummy. And then there is Junkie, which is definitely one of those sheer shades that I didn't realize was a sheer before going in because as I tried to layer it up, it really just became more streaky. This is gonna be one of those shades that it looks intimidating in the pan because it is a green, but I think it's going to either wear beautifully alone as a sheer wash of greeny shimmer across the lip or gonna wear well worked into and mixed into other shades. Next up is Disturbed, it's this deep, brick brown with beautiful like berry red undertones. 714 of course is a duplicate from the other one. It's that blue based red. Carnal is a medium deep brown with slight pink undertones. This is another good rival for 1993 because it is that classic brown lip, but I think a lot of people are gonna lean more towards this because it has those pink undertones to keep it more wear, or what some might consider more wearable for them on a daily basis. Then Safe Word is a much lighter version, I would say, of Carnal. It's a classic nude, but still keeps those pinky mauve undertones in there to keep it more of a wearable nude and less of a, you look kind of dead sort of nude. Studded is a taupey grayish with a slight iridescence to it. I would say it's more sheer on the lips than it looks in the pan. And then Whip is just your classic sheer peachy pink. It really, the, the, the shimmers in it are the pigment because the base itself is a very sheer, almost clear, but you're still going to get that beautiful peachy, goldy, shimmery shift. And that's it. Those are the latest lipstick launches from Urban Decay. Overall, I have to say nothing but good things to say about the formula. I think it's going to come down mostly to the shades that stick out to you. What you find more wearable on a daily basis, whether it is a single tube or whether you would get more good out of having 12 shades that you can play with and mix and match on a daily basis. So hopefully this helps you as you're kind of eyeing some of those new and limited edition slash holiday sets. So definitely let me know what you think in the comments if you guys have tried them. Let me know if you like them, don't like them, what you do or don't like about them, or if you're planning on getting any of these, would love to hear that in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys!